Hello Stampers! I am Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you live from Menasha, Wisconsin. I hope everybody is having a great Sunday. It is Sunday, April 10th. Oh my gosh, we had nicer weather here today. Hi Connie Neek, you're the first one popping in here this evening. Um, yeah, we had really, I'm looking out the window because my husband's burning something. <laughs> I keep going like, what is on fire out there? He got a new, um, what do you call that? You know, he bought one of those things you burn stuff in. <laughs> like you can make a bonfire in it. I don't know what they're called. You guys will tell me. And um, he got a new one. So I think he's probably testing it out. I'm not sure. Hi, Betty. And Sonia is here. Welcome. You've got Judy from Tennessee. I'll bet you it was nice and warm there. It was 55 degrees today or so. Uh, that's what my phone told me. I didn't even go outside today. I was busy, busy. I actually got my office cleaned up. Like it's, it would probably still look like a disaster to you guys, but the floor is vacuumed. The garbage is taken out. I put away a whole bunch of stuff over there on the other side of my table. Yeah, hi Julie. Welcome, and Vicki's here. I'm going to pull me up on my iPad so that when I flip you guys around, I can see your comments. Hopefully we won't have any problems. Last time I started watching the wrong video, and I'm like, what was happening wasn't even making sense. <laughs> okay, I think I'm on. I, this. You know why? Because I wore the same sweater two Sundays in a row. Today, I know this is what I'm wearing. It's not a green sweater. <laughs> Ooh, 76 in Southern Illinois. Well, you know, when I look to see what the temperature got up to today, it's supposed to be 67 here. Oh, Sandra says she can't hear me. You guys, the rest of you can hear me, can't you? Sandra, turn your volume on your phone or your iPad. Your volume must be off. Everyone else is hearing me okay, I think. I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure my iPad. Yep, I can hear me. Turn your volume on, Sandra. And it's funny that I'm telling her that because she can't hear me, right? <laughs> There's our first little snafu of the evening. Hi, Diane Christie, Julie Schulke, welcome. I'm so happy to see so many people coming in here. I am super excited about the projects I have to share with you tonight. You guys are going to love it. Oh my gosh, Colorado has 65 mile an hour winds. I am so sorry. Oh, oh no. And somebody said they had Connie. Oh yeah, Connie had a rough week. Connie, I'm so happy to see you here tonight. I hope I give you lots of giggles. That's what I, that's what I hope for. Um, <laughs> Hang on, I'm not, I'm not scrolling anymore. Okay, Terry says she can hear me just fine. Loud and clear. I know, I've got a really big mouth, don't I? That's what my husband tells me. <laughs> so I cleaned my office today. We had decent temperatures in Wisconsin. I have been binge watching. I just turned off my TV up here. I got a new TV. My other one broke. Um, and I just turned off. I've been binge watching Below Deck. Who watches Below Deck? So the one that was on today or the, you know, the series of them, because I watched, I don't know how many, I don't really watch them. I just kind of listen, half listen. And um, they were just coming into the COVID pandemic where Captain Lee had to cancel the last two charters because the world was shutting down. And I always think it's interesting to, when you hear things like that, that are like a rerun like that. That uh, they're like, yeah, they're saying that it's going to get really bad next week. And then the week after that, it'll be better. So it's like, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. If we knew, if we knew then what we know now, we probably all would have had panic attacks, right? I can remember thinking when they first announced that people were going to have to stay home for, I don't even remember what the period of time was. Um two weeks. I think they said two weeks to start with maybe. And I'm like, two weeks? Are you crazy? <laughs> two years later, right? <laughs> Good grief. Anyways, we had a fun week. We had a dance recital Friday night. 
Molly and Andy, my two grandkids, Mol um, you know Molly. Molly's been on here before. Molly's 11. Andy is 15. And they had a dance recital, the first dance recital in two years because of COVID. And it was the best dance recital. All of the all of the little performances were fantastic. And they start with like four to six year olds doing a little dance routine thing. And they're all dressed up in their flashy, cute little costumes. It was just adorable. And we brought Val and Val sat on Steve's shoulders and she was dancing and she just was so... Um, drawn to the performance and she loved the gold costumes they were real flashy bright shiny gold costumes that was her favorite so it was really cute we had a dance recital friday night um Haley and i and jared of course have been working on the potty training i went over there one day and got her to go potty in the big girl potty twice so that was exciting and um then we were we went to a birthday party yesterday for um, Steve's nephew's one year old, and we were so excited because we we're going to take both babies and Molly, and then everybody dumped us. <laughs> Molly got invited to go swimming with friends, and Anna said she actually was crying because she's like, "Well, I want to go swimming with my friends, but I want to go with Grandma and Papa." So. Um, we were like, go swimming. You go swimming. That's so much more important to be with your friends. And then um, Val got sick. So Haley and, and Dawson and Val did not go with us. So it was just me and Steve. And um, we went down to West Bend. If you guys are familiar with the area, we went down to West Bend to this birthday party. And the minute we got in town, Steve wanted to stop at the Harley shop. I was not happy because we were already... Party starts at 2 and it's 2.15 and now he wants to stop at the Harley shop. And I'm like, that's really rude. And you know what he said to me? He goes, yeah, well, I don't care. Life is short. <laughs> How can you argue with that? <laughs> so we pulled in the parking lot and he's like, are you coming in? I'm like, no. He goes, you sit here and pout. <laughs> and I did. I didn't pout. I could care less. But anyways, he went in the Harley shop and came away with he's buying a different bike. So... Whatever. I said, whatever. Life is short. <laughs> so we went to the party. It was fun. Um, it was a little cold because it was kind of outside and it was chilly yesterday. I wasn't, I should have put on my snow boots because my feet were cold. But anyways, um, when we got back from the party, I got ice cream and took it over to Haley and Jared's and we all had ice cream and watched a movie and laughed and giggled and Val was perfectly fine until it got a little bit later and then she started like feeling warm again and and um acting like she wasn't a hundred percent so but today she seems to be fine so that's good um this weekend I'm going to visit my mom I think I'm going to leave on Thursday morning and I'm going over there it's her birthday next Saturday ah! oh Friday actually Friday ah! <laughs> I'm looking at my calendar going is it Saturday no it's Friday her birthday is on tax day, April 15th. So um, I'm going to spend a few days with her. Before I forget you guys, I will not be live next Sunday. It's Easter and um, I'm. You, it's Easter. I'm just not gonna be live on Easter. <laughs> and um, what else is happening? Let's see. Doo, doo, doo. I don't have a John report. Nothing. I haven't seen him. I've seen his truck be gone and then it's here, but I don't see him come and go. So I've got no John report at all. Um, this morning, it was rather amusing watching Steve in the kitchen. <laughs> Steve, when I got up and went downstairs, he had the rotters out of the refrigerator. You know, the drawers in the bottom of your refrigerator that you put stuff in and it just sits in there and rots. I call them the rotter drawers. <laughs> He had those out washing them. And so um, it was interesting because he went to put them back in and he bumped one of the shelves that's on the door and our, our shelves just kind of go clink like this and hook in. He bumped that and the shelf fell off and everything fell on the floor. And, and I thought, oh, here we go. He's going to like have a conniption. But he didn't. He laughed and he's like, geez, what's going on here? 
And so then he decided, he goes, well, these need to be washed too. So he took it and he threw it in the sink. And I'm like, dude, take it easy with those. You're going to break them. He's like, they're not going to break. And I picked it up. The whole side of it's broken off. So now I get to order a new, <laughs> a new shelf. <laughs> is Steve better? Steve is better. Um, he got some prednisone for his shoulder. And oh, Gay, okay, thank you for saying happy birthday to my mom. Um, Steve got some prednisone for his shoulder and it is much better. So hopefully um, he'll probably still end up going in for a cortisone shot at some point because it's going to be golf season pretty soon, right? Hi, Sarah New. I'm happy to see you here tonight. So Steve is doing much better. Everybody's good. Val's good today. So um, my mom was sick too. She got sick again with a really bad cough and she said she was pretty sick. So her those kids are making her sick. I know that. <laughs> kids will do that, won't they? They have a lot of cooties, kids do. So anyways, um, yeah, Steve had the, the, like, you know, the domino thing going on today with the refrigerator. He's just going to clean the rotter drawers and then, oh, he ended up cleaning the shelves and then he broke one. And so now we got to order one and ugh, heavens. Anyways, um, Let's see. I got some more notes here that I can't read. Mm. No clue. Anyways, don't forget, I have free downloads. I have them all typed up and ready to roll. So tonight when we're done making our projects, all I have to do is download my video, to this video, to my computer and then upload it to YouTube. And I wanted to tell you guys, Last weekend when I did that, it usually doesn't take long at all to get everything, the video part done, but YouTube wouldn't approve my video. They kept, they kept saying they were checking it. They were doing checks on it, doing checks on it. And it's like, gosh, I didn't say anything that they should have been, that should have been stopping my video from being approved. So it took a long time for me to, um, get my video approved so that I could post it. So just know that my blog post is ready to roll as soon as I get this video done tonight. You guys will be able to go to my blog and find the free downloads because you're definitely going to want these tonight. I've got three different downloads that are ready to roll for tonight. And I'm still trying to read my note here. And that will feature on Facebook tonight. You know it will. Yeah, I don't know off something. Huh. Interesting. I don't know what I wrote. I'll let you know if I figure it out. You guys ever do that where you write yourself a note and then you can't read it? Oh, Kathy says, thank you so much. You are so welcome. Oh, and Haley's on here. Yay. I didn't see you come in, Haley. I hope Val's still feeling good. Yeah, we have Val's birthday party on the 24th. She turns two on the 25th, so that's exciting. Haley's doing a party theme of um, wild Wild animals, right, Haley? Wild. And so I'm going to be making some really cute snacks because I love to do that kind of stuff. So that'll be really fun. All right. Catalogs. You guys, we have a brand new annual catalog. This goes live on May 3rd. If you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator and you would like to get your hands, I can't show you. I almost flipped the inside. I can't do that. It's against policy. But if you don't have a demonstrator and you'd like one of these catalogs, they're nice and thick, you'll love it. I would be happy to mail one to you. Pop me an email. My email address is kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at the at sign, a stamp above .com. And I will get you, don't forget to put your address in the email, okay? And I'll get you a catalog out. Yes, and Haley said the theme is too wild. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. I know. I know, Kimberly says... Is it, was it Kimberly that said, yeah, Kimberly said, wow, Haley, that was fast too, really? I know, right? It's crazy. It's crazy how fast these kids grow up. Okay, please make sure that you are leaving a comment if you're coming in here new tonight. You definitely want to leave a comment. You'll get entered in a drawing to win fabulous prizes. Also, hit that thumbs up right now on Facebook. There's a like button. Hit that like button. And also, if you're watching later on YouTube, please hit that like button. That really helps me in all of the analytics behind these videos to be getting lots of thumbs up. And you can click right now and share this video. And that really helps me too. Joanne just said, shared. 
Thank you, Joanne, so much. I really appreciate that. Everybody who shares my video, I'm just trying to read here. Uh, oh, somebody's asking about Dawson. Yeah. Okay. I told you about the new catalog. Um, I I have the cards done for the Gumball Greetings kit. That is my April kit class. Oh my goodness, super, super, super cute, you guys. So adorable. I was just editing a video before I came on here live. I'm getting those done this week and all the project sheets typed up. And then I will start cutting cardstock for the kits. I, sh I will have those available to go out on Monday of next week, the 18th. That's when I'm scheduled to get those. That's what I had, right? Let me make sure. Yep, the week of the 18th, I'll have those ready. We also have a Dahlia Days. Let me grab that quick. Fun fold class that I do with my friends Barb and Dina. This is the Dahlia stamp set and set of dies. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. We have a pre-order. Look at these beautiful flowers. We have a pre-order available to order that class. There are nine cards in the class. You get a pre-cut cardstock pack with it as well as polished dots, crinkled seam binding, and an expressions in ink ephemera kit. I'll come with that. And that is $48, I think. Yep, $48. You can also add on the bundle and and the kit and the bundle is $108. I'm looking at my notes that I put over here because you guys know I can't remember anything. Yeah. So um, all kinds of great kits happening right now, too. And um, I don't think that Dahlia, uh, Dahlia Days, let me make sure. The Dahlia Days, I don't think, is carrying over to the annual catalog. It's in our mini catalog. No, it's not. So that means it's retiring when our current mini catalog retires. And let me, oh, this one. This mini catalog. I'll also send you one of these if you want um, the annual catalog. I'll throw one of these in too. But this catalog, mm, fantastic. Tonight, we are going to be using the Flowering Fields suite of products for the cards that we're making. I can't hardly wait. They're so cool. But first, I have to do my mail. When we're done stamping, I forgot to do my mail last week and uh, you know somebody might have said something but you know it's hard for me to pay attention to all the things so um i will do mail when we're done tonight stamping but first i have prizes to give away so i have some of these silver and clear epoxy essentials and these are fabulous fabulous embellishments i have this going out for commenting on my facebook live last week and Lori Stansberry of Glenwood City, Wisconsin. I had to look up where that was. It's on the way to Minnesota. These are going to be going out to Lori for commenting last week. So make sure you leave a comment. Also, for sharing my video, I have some sponge daubers. And also, I found this. Oops, hang on. I got something stuck to my nail. I found these, a half a pack of these um, champagne rhinestones. I'm going to be sending that along with the sponge daubers for sharing my video last week. That's going to Terry Sampson of St. Michael, Minnesota. Congratulations, Terry. These will be on their way to you. And then for placing an order last week, within the last week, I should say, I have all things fabulous. This is a 26 stamp set stamp set 26 stamps in this photopolymer stamp set this is going out to marie miller of green bay wisconsin congratulations and linda is on here tonight linda made me a whole bunch of these little sewing kits well she didn't make them for me she had them and asked if she could send them to me and i said sure i could put them in with prizes so I am going to be including one in each one of these so everybody will get a little sewing kit too. And I took these, I took this and I threw it in my duffel bag that I take when I go to my mom's house. And I threw it in my suitcase that I take when I travel, you know, like go fly on a plane someplace. So you'll always have this. These are really nifty. They're tiny, 
don't take up any space, won't add any weight to your suitcase. I always have a problem with my suitcase weight. Do you guys have a problem with your suitcase weight? Ooh, it's hard. Oh, Terry's on here. Yay, Terry. Okay, so I think we are plugged in. I don't think I have to do anything else here. I think we're ready to stamp. That was kind of quick, wasn't it? I'm gonna look at my note one more time. Off, off something, oh. Mm, oh, I know what it says. Steve, when he broke the shelf for the refrigerator this morning, this is what he says. He goes, oh, I'm sure that'll be all over Facebook tonight, won't it? That's what I wrote. I'm like, don't forget to tell him that. And so I, of course it will. And and I actually said to him, oh, I didn't even think of that. So then I ran upstairs here and wrote down broken refrigerator shelf so that I wouldn't forget. <laughs> I know I'm kind of mean like that, but it is funny, right? I'm not going to, no crying over spilled milk here. And literally the milk fell on the floor when he, the shelf fell off the door. <laughs> okay. We are going to be using both of these stamp sets. Oh my gosh, this is the tulip fields. This is the flowering tulips. We're gonna be using both sets of dies. I'm gonna start getting all my goodies out here. Um, I actually received a card in a swap from one of my team members. And I'll talk about that a little bit too. And then I decided, oh, I have to make this card for you guys because it's so cool and so easy. And you know, a cool card that's easy, that's a win-win, right? Totally. Okay, I'm getting out all my bits, all my pieces. Uh, oh, I hope I have this cut already. Oh, I do, good. Okay, here we go. We're ready. We're going to do the big flip. If you get motion sickness, close your eyes right now. I'll let you know when to open them back up. We are going to flip this camera around. If we happen to get disconnected, please just pop back onto my page because I will come back live. I'm always afraid I'm gonna disconnect this. Now I need to get it straight, so hang tight. I always like to make sure it's straight. Otherwise, don't you feel like you're kind of off? <laughs> I know I do. It's easy to do for me. Okay, look at this. Flowering fields, oh my goodness, such a beautiful, beautiful designer series paper pack. This comes 12 by 12. It is included with the um, Dahlia Days Funfold class. This is what we're using is the Flowering Fields designer series paper. And let's see, is it in, nope, that's not it, no, 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 no. Yeah, okay, so that's the one we're using it with. I think we used it with one last month, too. Oh, the flowering rain boots, which, by the way, I heard from Maureen today. She messaged me. She sent me an email and said she is absolutely just loved the cards in the flowering rain boots kit that she ordered from me. She said they were so beautiful that... When she finished them, she took a step back and looked at them and thought, my gosh, these are fantastic. So... If anybody is interested in getting the flowering rain boots kit, I do have just a few left. And you get a, um, a pack of this paper cut six by six, the doilies and the baker's or the um, linen thread, and enough cards to make eight cards in here. You get four different designs, two of each. They are spectacular. You can add on the bundle if you don't have it. But um, let me know. I've just got a few of those left. And then I wanted to let you guys know that we ran out of the blue foil paper and the blue rhinestones. But I have just a few of the Waves of the Ocean online class left. They come with the rhinestones and the... Um, white glitter ribbon to make the cards. There's nine different cards cut in here. So you can make nine fabulous cards with the Waves of the Ocean online class. You need the designer paper and the blue foil paper, but the rest, um, the, the rest of it, all the pieces, all the, all the punches, anything like that, scraps to make these cards are in there. You get a PDF file with videos for each of the nine cards. 
This is the class that I do with Dina and Barb. So if you happen to have ordered it from them, don't order it from me. But I just want to let you know I have a few of those left. And I know that these rhinestones are kind of a hot commodity since they're out of stock. And then my Turtle Friends bundle. I had a bundle um, with the stamp set and the punch and the class. That sold immediately after I talked about it last Sunday. But if you have the Turtle Friends bundle... I have a few of these kits left. There are, again, eight cards in here. It's all pre-cut cardstock. You get a PDF file with four different cards in it, video links for each one, dimensions, the whole deal. I have a few of these left. And then Grassy Grove. Oh my goodness. This is a fabulous, fabulous bundle. Um, you get a pack of the New Horizons Designer Series paper. Here is the pre-cut cardstock pack. Uh, the pebbles enamel shapes, some denim ribbon, and some linen thread. So there's a lot in here. This particular kit is 60, nope, hang on, mm, yeah, $52 for all the goodies. So that's for Grassy Grove. So pop me an email if you would like. Um, there's a link on my blog. My blog is right here. There's a link in the right-hand column or towards the bottom of each blog post, you're going to see online classes. When you click on that, it'll take you there and you can scroll through and see all the classes that I have available that are not sold out. Okay, flowering fields, tulip fields, flowering tulips. And we have, oh my gosh, all these windmills and a little bicycle and some little fences and clouds. This is a super, super cool bundle. And then we also have this one with all the tulips in it and some really cool elements in a line, a row of tulips. This is this bundle. This is all part of the same suite. We are going to be making, let me put my little dimensions up here so I have those handy. We're going to be making a fun fold with this. So let me get all my bits and pieces out. Let's see what I got here. Okay, I'll move this out of the way. By the way, this is my current host code. If you do place an order with me, and I do appreciate your orders, use this host code if your order is under $150. If it's over $150, do not use the code. You're going to get some rewards from Stampin' Up. I definitely want you to have those. Now, somebody had trouble finding the um, where to put the code last week. And if you are in the store, when you click on your shopping cart... Right underneath of that shopping cart is going to say apply code or something like that. And you'll type this in right there. We have a piece of Poppy Parade. This is four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And again, there's going to be a free downloadable PDF that you can print out with pictures, dimensions, instructions, and a link back to this video. We're going to bring this into our paper trimmer. And we are going to score at one and three eighths. Oh, and another thing I did, you guys, in the PDF, since we're using lots of weird measurements like three eighths, seven eighths, one eighth, goofy measurements like that, I put my little one inch ruler graphic in there to help you out too. So that'll be right in the PDF that you can download. So we're going to do one and three eighths, two and three quarters, five and a half. And six and seven eighths. So if you struggle with those weird measurements, you're definitely going to want to print that PDF out. And I would cut out that one inch and hang it right near your stamping area. And I was going to say, I usually have one hung back here, but it must have fallen down and I must have <laughs> vacuumed it up because I did clean today. Yay me. Okay, we're going to fold this in and then fold it out. And I'm going to burnish those edges really good with my bone folder. I also cleaned all the little glue boogers off my table. <laughs> yeah, I know that's kind of gross, right? But they are, they, you get these little glue dots all over the place. And I did clean that up today. So, hey me, it was a clean and kind of day. Okay, this is what our card looks like. Super easy, right? 
This piece is also Poppy Parade. This is one and a quarter by five and a half. Then I've got a scrap here. Uh, we are going to take out the tulip dies. I'm winning, Jenny says. You darn right I am, Jenny. Oh my goodness. I was so excited. I've actually gotten a little ahead of the game over the last week or so. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it near the bottom of a scrap. You want just a very thin margin down here and we're going to die cut that. And we are also going to take a scrap of basic white. Let me make sure that, yeah, this is the right, this is a scrap, okay. Of basic white, I'm gonna bring in my piercing mat. This is called a piercing mat, pierce mat. And I just put printer paper over it and tape it on with scotch tape. This is what I choose to use to stamp on. This is my surface. It's got just a tiny bit of give to it. But if you don't have one of these, you can find one in my online store. I don't know how much they are, like five, six dollars. They don't cost much, maybe eight, but they're wonderful. So I've got the thank you. And this is coming from the flowering tulips right here. I love anything with a circle like that. We are going to die cut that with our layering circles. And let me tell you, tell you about how big this is. This is about one and five, hang on. Yeah, one and five eighths circle or so. So we're gonna die cut this. We're gonna die cut this. We are going to bring in a scrap of black and let me find my other dies. We're going to grab this stinking, adorable little bicycle out of here. Look at how cute that bike is. Little basket and everything. We're gonna die cut that. Okay. And hang tight here. Because, oh, and you're gonna do a black scallop that's just a little bit bigger than this. And of course, through the magic of TV, I already have this done. Look at how cute that bicycle is. Can you see this with just a bunch of different colors on a card that has nothing to do with tulips? I mean, it's really cute. Okay, now we've got two white pieces. I'm just gonna move these over to the side now. We're gonna do a little bit of stamping on here. Um, hang on, I got a little, there we go. Okay, these two white pieces are two and five eighths by four and an eighth. And we are going to take our windmill. And what you're gonna do with the windmill is you're gonna stamp it close to the top. Is Danny Garola on here tonight? Is this, oh look, I got ink on my fingers. Danny, is this starting to look familiar? This is this was Danny's card. I'm just gonna make it for you in a different color. And I'll show you her card also because it's really pretty. So, and Danny's one of my team members. Now we do a monthly team swap. And um, can someone tell me what kind of pin? Yes, I can tell you. Was that Karen? This is an upholstery pin, Karen, and it's just got a little handle on it. Any kind of pin will work, but I use an upholstery pin and I use this to, I keep it on the side. I just push it inside the plastic that's on the side of my glue bottle. And I use this just in case my glue gets clogged. And then I just put it right back in there. It's an upholstery pin. And you can find this at, like I would assume, Joanne Fabrics would have them, maybe even, well, I don't know about Walmart, but an upholstery pin, that's what I use. Okay, so Danny Garola made this card and we do a team swap every month and she is one of my team members. And so I got this card in a whole bag of different cards. And one of the things that I love about having a team is being able to swap with them. And so, I just wanted to remind you guys, if you're not getting a discount on your products, you should be. You can join my team and get a minimum 20% discount and be involved in all these other things that happen behind the scenes. So super, super fun. Okay, I am going to take my pool party ink and I'm going to stamp some of these adorable little clouds in here. So there's two different cloud stamps. One's bigger 
and one is smaller. Just gonna do another one. Oh, maybe we'll do one more right up here. Aren't they sweet? I, I love this. We're gonna take our crumb cake markers. These are our alcohol Stampin' Blend markers. And I'm gonna use the darker one to do a little bit of shading here. And then on my windmill blades, I'm just gonna go up the edges here. Now, I kind of went out of the lines on that one and that's gonna bother me. So, that was the dark crumb cake. I'm gonna bring in my color lifter here. Did you guys see where I went out of the lines? You probably can't see it. Look at that, I lift that color up and I went out a little bit right there. That's what the color lifter's for. So if you are getting Stampin' Blend alcohol markers, make sure you order the color lifter, it's fabulous and it'll get you out of some pickles from time to time. Please put the cap on my liquid glue. Jennifer, let me tell you something about that. I do not put the lid on all day long. All day long, I leave my liquid glue sitting here like this as I'm using it. Now, I, when I walk away, I put it on, but I don't seem to have an issue with it. And because I'm picking it up and putting it down all the time, it's just easier to leave the lid off. Isn't that funny? My glue, the whole glue on the inside never dries up. But if I leave it open too long without using it, it might get a little glue dot stuck in the end and that's what this little pin is for. So, and when I use my glue, I leave it lay on its side. I don't keep setting it up like this because all the glue runs back down to the bottom. If I do it like this, my glue is always right there really close. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I think it's pretty efficient. So now I'm gonna come in with my lighter crumb cake and I'm going to color the rest of my windmill base here. I'm gonna blend it just a little bit. I hope you guys can see that pretty good. But thank you for, thank you for watching out for me, Jennifer. I do appreciate that, but the, I do do that on purpose. All right, now, this is where the cool part comes in. Not that the rest of it isn't cool. I am going to take my Poppy Parade ink and we're gonna take this. This is like pie slices of tulips, which is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Lois says her cat steals the lid from her glue bottle. Hang on, I missed it, and plays with it. Oh, I, that would, yeah, that would, that would get lost, right? That wouldn't be good. Okay, so I have inked up my piece of pie tulips and I'm going to bring that down here and I'm gonna stamp it with Poppy Parade ink right in the middle, right here. Now, you're gonna to wanna to re-ink this every time. And just trust me on that because if you don't re-ink the whole thing every time, you'll get some goofy looking edges. And now it's almost flirty flamingo. So I'm using the same ink pad, but I'm using it second generation. I'm gonna stamp. This is a little bit harder to do without my head being right over the top. But now you would think I've stamped once so I could do the second generation. Don't do that, just trust me, it won't work right. You want to ink it all up again and then come in and do your second generation. So now I need a second generation again on the other side of this one, I'm gonna ink it up. I'm gonna have to stand up so I can see what I'm doing here. Come in here. Stamp that. Now we're going to do first generation again. And we're going to do one more over here that is second generation. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now, of course, you can use different colors in here for your pieces of pie, different color tulips. But I just thought that was so cool. So that's what I did with it. I used Poppy Parade, first and second generation. Okay, I think we're ready. Oh, let's do this. We've got, this is the same size. You have two white pieces at two and five eighths by four and an eighth. And then I've got a little half inch scrap of the Flowering Fields Designer Series paper. 
I'm just gonna put that right down here at the bottom. Leave a little bit of a white border on the bottom. There we go. And trim that off. This was just a scrap. Okay, we're ready to put this together. So this panel I made to go on the back so I have some place to write. And this is a tight little fit. There we go. And now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna put it right in the center. I told you guys this card was really easy. And I love a fun fold that's easy because I think fun folds give us such a big wow factor. And then the fact that they're really easy to make just magnifies that a hundred times, right? Okay. I'm gonna see how much of this do I have to cut off. Now this is my bridge piece. This is one and a quarter by five and a half. And I need to go about up to here with my glue. I don't wanna put my scissors in glue. And I'm just going to put a few dots of glue on a few of these flowers to help this stick in place. You're gonna put this fairly close to the bottom not fairly close, you're gonna go all the way to the bottom. Sorry about that. All the way to the bottom of this piece. Whoops, I gotta pull this down. I can't see what I'm doing here. Okay, that's cool. Okay, there we go. So this row of tulips or flowers, I think is just, it was genius of Danny to use this for a bridge card because it's the absolute perfect die to go on here. Okay, here's our gorgeous tulip paper. I use this particular pattern and we're gonna take these two and we're gonna put them on the outside. Now, you could put more designer paper on these two panels if you wanted to. That would really you know, add to your card also. But I'm just gonna do this these outside panels just like this. Make sure you glue them right set up. You don't want your tulips to be upside down. That's something I would totally do. And here we go. Okay, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna glue it over here. And I think what I'm gonna use, you guys, I don't know if that's really necessary, but I'm gonna use some tear and tape because I want my card to make sure that, because this is an extra piece, I just wanna make sure it's not going to come off because people are gonna kinda of play with it. You know what I mean? Okay, so take your pick tool. This is my favorite tool. I use this thing constantly. It is always sitting right next to me when I'm stamping. When I go someplace and take stamping stuff with me, it always comes with me too. It's my favorite tool. We're gonna just put this all the way to the bottom and all the way over to the left side of our card, just like that. So this is what we have so far. And then we're gonna put a little tear and tape on the other side. I'm gonna fold this open here, put a little bit right here. And again, I'm just being extra cautious with this glue would probably work, but I have tear and tape right here. We're going to be using that on another project too tonight. So it's right here at my fingertips. Whoops. Okay. Now we're going to take this one over. Notice that I'm closing this side right here. And I'm going to put this one right over here. Everything is flat. That's important. If this happens to stick off at all, you can trim it with your with your snips. Mine lined up pretty good, but you can turn it over and trim it off from this side using that as a guide. This is our bridge card. Is this not so cool? Look how cool that is. Ah! And then we are going to take our sentiment, the thank you sentiment and put that 
in our black scallop. And then I'm gonna add this to my card. I want, Danny did this and I thought it was pretty nifty, about right here. So I need glue from here over and not at the top, I need it at the bottom right here. Okay, so I put glue over here and over there. And now we're going to bring this in, put it right here, make sure your, oh, your words are straight, there we go. And then I'm gonna bring this little bicycle in Whoops, whoops, hang on. My crown is falling off, my bicycle's running away from me. I'm just gonna put this little bicycle right down here. Is that not so cute, you guys? Okay, now, I know I'm gonna get people who will ask, how do you mail this? It folds completely flat to go in your envelope and it fits right inside your envelope. This is called a bridge fold card. It fits right in there. Oops, let me get that in there. Just like any other card. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who said they get black? Lenora said, the smudging always happens to me. I know. I usually stick my hands in the red. Red is usually a big problem for me, but I got, I got through the poppy parade. All right, now I've got an envelope flap here that is naked and we can't have that. So I'm gonna take some of our designer paper. This is two and a half by six and we are going to decorate this envelope flap to match our pretty little card. Buy two packs of this paper, you guys. It's called Flowering Fields. Just get two. You're, you're gonna have to have two, I'm just telling you. I'm saving you the heartache of running short on one. Get yourself two because you know you're gonna love it. And I find that if I buy two packs of paper, I use more of it because I don't feel chintzy. Like, oh my gosh, if I use up this whole pattern of this one paper, then what if I find something I wanna make and I don't have the paper? Meh, just buy two. Here we go, there it is, right there. Beautiful, beautiful card ready to go springy love these flowers here the flowering tulips and the tulip fields absolutely gorgeous now i'm going to show this to you in the catalog <clears throat> this is our jj mini catalog it is from january through june and this is a whole suite so you've got this bundle and this bundle the suite also includes some of this beautiful ribbon, the brushed butterflies. Here's the designer series paper. Right over here on this page, you can get all of this with one item code. It's $126.75. Or you can individually order any of this. And it shows you a little bit better the stamp set here. This is the flowering tulips. You bundle it down here. When you buy the dies with the stamp set, you save 10%. Here is the tulip fields. And again, when you bundle it, use this item code down here, you save 10% when you get the stamp set with the dies. The windmill dies will fit through the mini embossing folder as well as the tulip dies. That's what that little symbol is down here. So I just wanted you to know that. Look what they did with this. They cut these, they cut them out and use them in different colors. And look at the fence there. That fence is in here. Um, it's part of the die set. So anyways, really, really cool. The paper is beautiful. Thank you guys so much for all your kind comments. I am going to get these dies back in here so I do not lose them because you know how that is. It's painful. I thought I lost the, jo the lid to my bubble gum machine today. Oh, but I found it. Don't worry. <laughs> and we are going to get our next project out. Uh, I'll put this in here too. Yay. Oh, I said I would show you Danny's card. Darn it. I always forget to do that. Look at this. <gasps> this is the other. Here's the designer paper she used right here. 
I used this one. Danny used this one. And look at those pretty tulips. She also, um, this, this part right here, the scallop part is evening evergreen. Her bicycle is um, early espresso. So just a little bit different there. But this is the same exact card. I had to do it. Thank you, Danny, so much for sharing your talent with our whole team because, oh my gosh, this was like, oh, ah. yeah, I love fun folds. Okay, next up, uh, let's see. I'm going to get a new piercing mat out because that one's pretty distracting. I have a whole bunch of these that I just keep covered, ready to go for you guys. So things are a little bit neater. <laughs> Sometimes that's hard. Oh, hang on, I'm losing all my goodies here. So we are going to be using the same paper for the next two projects. So I'm telling you, just buy two. <laughs> okay, I have the Tasteful Label dies. Yeah, Denise says they're both pretty in both colors. They really are, aren't they? I love this. This is Mango Melody. And then you've got the pumpkin pie in there and white. Oh, so pretty. These are just beautiful. All right. We're going to be using Easter friends. Oh, my gosh. So I was thinking about this. We're getting pretty close to Easter, right? I probably should have shared um, these cards a little bit sooner, but I did just make them this week. So I tend to be kind of a last-minute Nelly on stuff. I'm not going to lie. Last minute Lucy, maybe. But um, this particular stamp set, this is fabulous for making baby cards, right? Not only Easter, but you um, remember the baby card that I made for um, Dawson using this little bunny? Oh my gosh, so cute. So we're going to pull in our stamps here. And... I've got pumpkin pie ink, and we're also going to be using memento ink with the Easter Friends stamp set and the Flowering Fields designer series paper. And we're going to be using some of this white frayed ribbon. Who has this stuff? This ribbon is crazy fun. Like, you're going to love it. So just hang tight. You'll see what I mean. I've also got my champagne rhinestone basic jewels here as well as So Saffron Stampin' Blends and the Light Pumpkin Pie Stampin' Blend. And Tear and Tape. Well, Tear and Tape is for the, well, maybe. Okay, <laughs> maybe this project, but definitely the next one too. Here comes our cardstock layers. We're gonna be using Pumpkin Pie. And let me get all of these out of my bag here. Okay, Pumpkin Pie. I've got this. Got this, this, and this, and some scraps, I believe. Okay, let's get all this out of the way. So here is our card base. This is four and a quarter by 11. And um, it's scored at five and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead. What is that mat you have? It's this is a piercing mat that I explained this a little earlier if you missed it. This is a pierce. It's called a Stampin' Pierce mat. We sell them in my online store. And I just cover it with printer weight paper and tape it on with scotch tape. So if you want to see one that's not taped up, hang on. Oh, I can undo this one because this one's pretty icky. So this is what it looks like. It's just a piercing mat. It's a foam rubber mat sold in my online store. Yeah, I really like these. I always use them to stamp on. Okay, glad you asked. <clears throat> Here we go. We are burnishing this fold. I want to make sure that this is lined up good. Now we're going to bring our paper trimmer in. And hang on while I move some stuff around here. We are going to open our card back up. This is going to be the top. I'm going to cut from here to here. This is another fun fold because you know how much I love them. I am putting 
the pointed end in the channel and all the way down to the um, score line. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna cut this off, okay? Now don't lose that. We're gonna take this one and we are going to cut this. This, this piece, by the way, is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. We're gonna cut it from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. So let's get this in here. And again, I'm lining up my points in the channel, the cutting channel, and we're gonna cut that. So this is what we have. You guys are gonna love this one too. This is a super easy card again. <clears throat> and I'll show you where I got the idea because uh, let's see who made this one. Yeah, another one of my team members. <laughs> They're great, my team is great. Okay, we're gonna take this now and we are going to, now my paper has a definite pattern, so you have to pay attention to that. Um, I can't, you don't wanna put it on here upside down, right? This is how my card is gonna look. I don't want my tulips upside down, so I'm definitely gonna use this piece to go right here. And we're going to glue that in and see this glue has been sitting here open and it's still running just to let you know that I wasn't telling you fibs. Like it really does continue to work. But my cats aren't in here stealing the lid either. That would be a game changer. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is what we have so far. Now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna flip this paper over and we're gonna put this on glue. This particular fun fold that I'm making is called a crisscross fold. At least that's what I'm calling it. It makes sense. Crisscross fold. I'm pretty sure that's the real name of it too. Okay, so now that we've got that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back in here. This piece is going to go right here. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to put adhesive from here over, okay? So we're gonna do that with the tear and tape. I'm just gonna give it one piece of tear and tape just for the extra strength. And bring this back in here. Yep, that looks good. Whoops, I just tore my tear and tape in half. I'm gonna put it here and here, and then I'll just add some glue. And you guys notice I use a very, very little amount of glue. I'm not squeezing it out until it drips onto my paper. I'm more putting my glue on the paper and scribbling as I barely push it out. That's the proper amount of glue to use when you're making cards. Otherwise, you make a big old mess and when I hear from people that, oh, I hate using liquid glue, that's why, because they're squeezing out too much. We're just gonna line this up with the bottom of our card. Look at this. Oh, isn't that easy, you guys? It's just this piece flipped around this way. Okay, now we have some stamping to do. So we are going to, uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take these tasteful label dies. These are, I think these are, are these retiring? Who knows? Who knows if those are retiring? Let me look. I thought I looked it up and I, either they're still in stock or they're not retiring. Hang on, I can't show you that inside of my catalog. Tasteful label dies. I think they are retiring, but they are not gone yet. I'm pretty sure they're retiring. Okay, I should have wrote that down. Did I? No, I didn't. So we're gonna take these tasteful label dies. There's a whole bunch in here. These are all awesome labels. Uh, there are 10 different labels in here. We're gonna use this one. We're going to die cut some basic white. You're gonna need two of those. Whoops. Oh. Uh, oh, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp and then we'll die cut. Okay, sorry, I got ahead of myself. And this one is blank. Okay. 
Yeah, we definitely want to stamp first before we die cut on this. Otherwise, it's going to give us some kind of goofy lines. So I've got my little cute little duck here. And I am going to make this card in memory of peepers. <laughs> Barb had a duck for a few days that her son brought home. <laughs> and she named him peepers and she took care of him. And peepers is gone now. He went someplace else. But this is a tribute to peepers. We got to see a whole bunch of videos about peepers. And then I see my sister just got four ducks. Must be for the kids. Okay, so I've got some tape on here. I'm going to die cut this. Hang on. Oh, this, by the way, somebody asked me about this tape that I use. This is just temporary tape. Washi tape does the same thing. But um, I get this tape. It's called Low Tech Artist Tape. It's by Scotch. And I take it and put it on my clothes a few times before I use it. Otherwise, it'll rip your cardstock. It's just a little bit too sticky. But this is the tape that I use when I say tape it down. And only because I don't have a, a roll of washi tape out here. Washi tape works just as well. So don't, don't knock yourself out getting something if you have washi tape. Okay, here's our little duck. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Happy Easter. And I don't want a big Happy Easter like this. I want it to say Happy and then Easter. Happy Easter. So I am going to ink up my Happy Make sure that I only have ink on my happy. That looks really good. I'm going to stamp that right over here. Yay! With pumpkin pie ink, by the way. I'm going to grab my chamois. And I am going to clean my stamp. Stamp it on your scrap paper just to make sure there's no residue left. And now I'm going to do Easter. And then I'm going to look at this and make sure that I don't have any pumpkin pie on my happy. And I'm going to stamp Easter. And that way I've changed the orientation or whatever you want to call it from a long sentiment to a shorter sentiment because that's what I needed. Okay, we are going to also take the sentiment sending warm and happy wishes this spring. And we are going to stamp that on another tag. Now we need to color this little duck dude in. We need to color peepers in. He was so cute, you guys. Oh my gosh. You would have loved him. Okay, I've got the light pumpkin pie. And I'm going to color in his little beak. And then I've got So Saffron. I'm gonna use the brush end of the So Saffron. Now Stampin' Up! has given us all of the shading, right? So I'm just coloring over what they have done with the shading, with their pencil strokes, I guess. This is more like a pencil drawing. And I'm just doing that with the dark So Saffron. And now I'm gonna come in with the light So Saffron and do just a tad of blending. And I know it's really hard to see in the camera the difference between the two colors, but just trust me in real life, it's there. So I'm gonna color in my little duck. I'm gonna bring in my blending brush because I got a little carried away right here. And I'm gonna clean up my little out of the lines mess that I made. There we go. Isn't he cute? He is so cute. I love him. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to, oh, there should be, oh, here's a white piece. This is four by five and a quarter. And I've also got a little strip. This is a half inch strip of the designer paper. So I'm just gonna take this and put it across the bottom. Okay. There we go. This is gonna go right on the inside of our crisscross fold card. Just like this. 
Now you want your top, right, and bottom to be the same, okay? These three, that really matters. Oh, and then I need my ribbon. Here's my frayed ribbon. So I am going to see, one end will unravel better than the other one. So let me see which end that is, because I had to pull some of this off of my roll. Oh, I wonder if I did something to this already. This should just completely unravel when you pull it. And mine, I think I did do something to this. I think I cut the edge off of it and I didn't need to do that. But anyways, when you pull it, it'll go, it'll just unravel. So I apologize for that, but trust me when I say that it really will do that. Now, here's the, here's the thing that I've noticed though, is that if you take a piece of ribbon and you wanna unravel this end and this end, that doesn't work as well. It only really unravels from one end well. So just know that because at first I took this and I went like this and I tried to unravel this one and this one and then I was going to put it under this tag like that. One of these, the end that was the one that I cut off the roll, it didn't unravel well. So I learned a lesson there and this isn't doing it because I cut the side and I, I don't have any more ribbon. I got more ribbon coming, but anyways, so you can just pull it and it'll go trust me I would not steer you wrong on this I played with this ribbon for quite a while now I'm gonna grab my who has this frayed ribbon who's got some of this and has played with it let me know I want to know it's pretty cool very cool ribbon oops there's my mini glue dot I'm gonna do that and I'm just gonna set that right like that and then I've got another piece here. And I'm just gonna unravel some of this. And again, this isn't working the way it should because I messed with it. And I sent my roll off to one, it's with one of my helpers right now. So we're gonna get a little bit of frayed going on there. And I'm going to cut this and add a little mini glue dot here. Oh, I don't know why my comments aren't showing. There they are. Okay, sorry, I, I didn't know. Will you have this card on your page? Yeah, I'll, everything I make will be on my blog. Thanks for asking, Kristen. Everything I make will be on my blog. Okay, so here comes some more. Oops. <laughs> let, me, let me move this. Move this a little bit. There we go. That's what I wanted to do with it. There we go. Kathy says she has two rolls of it and she has not used it yet. Yeah, it's really fun. Try it. Is that ribbon in the new catalog? No, it's not. It's only in the mini catalog. Hang on, I got a little tear on the back there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some dimensionals. So it does, it is not carrying over to the um, new catalog. We're gonna take our little label and we're gonna put it right in here. And I like the ribbon because it kind of goes along with the, with the fluffy, whoops, <laughs> the fluffiness of downy feathers, I think is a good way to put it. So my label's gonna go right up here and I'm gonna put a dimensional right there and dimensional right there. And we can pop this off. Make sure that that's straight and centered. And now what I did with this sentiment is I brought it in here and I'm gonna glue it. And I'm just gonna match it up to the label that's in there and hold it for a second. The white frayed ribbon did carry over, are you kidding? Hang on, I'm gonna look. 
I didn't think, I didn't think it did. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because I really do love the ribbon. Okay, oh, it is in the new catalog, you guys. Sorry, thank you so much. Who told me that? Mm, I can't find it now. Arr. Susan, thank you so much. The white frayed ribbon is in the catalog. Where did mine go, even go? Oh, here it is. It's on my lap. It is in the catalog, you guys. It's fabulous. I love it. Okay, so here's our cute little card. We're going to bring in those champagne rhinestones. I picked these because they're kind of an orange color, right? And I thought they would look really nice on my label here. And Diane says she just ordered it. Excellent. You're going to love that you have it. Let me get some of this cleaned up. Yeah, and when you pull it the right way, you'll get one string, not all of this. That's because I cut the, the, the um, binding edge off of it. I must have been doing something else. I didn't realize that. Okay. Then we've got two and a half by six on our envelope. So we have a beautiful matching envelope for our pretty little Easter card. Or, you know, you could turn this into a baby card. Any kind of card, really. Thank you card. But I'm talking about using the Easter friends. This would be a great baby card or even a birthday card for a baby. Okay, here we go. Here is our crisscross card. And now I promised that I would show you where I got the idea from, right? This was a swap that I got from Sabrina Bartels. And isn't that pretty with the in symmetry designer paper and bundle? Look at that. Same exact card, just different paper, different stamp set, different die. Oh, she used the same die I did, or I used the same die she did here. Let's get that right. <laughs> but again, just a beautiful, beautiful card. Love it. And this came from a team swap. I get so many great ideas from my team. It just makes my heart happy. They're stamping. We're all benefiting from swapping. Like I said, if you're not getting a discount on your product, if you're not part of somebody's team, you should consider it. Getting a discount on your Stampin' Up! products is fabulous, but the stuff that goes along with it, like swapping and things like this, that's the real bonus. That's being part of something bigger is so much fun. Most of the members on my team are discount shoppers, so they are in it for a discount, and I do not discriminate against my discount shoppers. I love them all. Okay, here comes next. Let me move this out of the way. We're gonna bring this over here by the other cards and we're gonna bring in our next project. Oh, look at I had that. Um, let me put my little sheet up here. Did anybody have any questions that I missed? I'm gonna take just a little minute here just in case I missed any questions. Aw, oh, thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you. What are you guys drinking tonight? I've got my strawberry lemonade. I'm pretty, I'm pretty boring. <laughs> I am lucky. I am lucky, Peggy, to have a team that does that. But I do host a lot of events for them. We have a team meeting. Oh, look at Ann saying, Kelly's team is the best. She does so much for us. We have a team meeting every month. We have a team meeting on Tuesday. And um, there's going to be a cool demonstration. We have mystery stamping. We go over all the things that are happening with Stamping Up. So we make sure that everybody is getting the most benefit out of their discount shopper or demonstrator status. And I never push you to do more than you want to. It's completely up to you. But like I said, most of my team are discount, discount shoppers and I love them. I love them. I love my business builders. If you want to learn how to build a business, I can help you do that. Okay, next up, one of my all-time favorite projects, you guys. And I usually make this every year. And I absolutely love it because it's super easy and fun. We're going to be using the Flowering Fields designer paper again. 
Oh, I see lots of water drinkers. You know what? I don't ever drink water because I think it really sucks the joy out of your life. <laughs> I'm not a water drinker. I hate it. But good for you that it is good for you. I'm not going to not gonna <laughs> deny. This is six by six, and we are going to score at two inches on all four sides. So two inches, two inches... Two inches. I was actually looking for an old blog post and I ran across this project. I think I made this, I don't know if I made it last year, but I think I found it on 2019 and I thought, oh, we need to do this. So we've got two inches on all four sides. Hang on, my glue just fell on the floor. And we're going to grab our paper snips. And I like to fold on these so that I can see where they are because this paper is kind of busy, so it's kind of hard to see the score lines. So if you have busy paper, just fold on them. It makes it easier to see your score lines. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut from the bottom up and the top down. And I am looking at my, my designer paper so that the flowers are this way, okay? So I'm just gonna flip it over, cut up from the bottom, and you're gonna cut on that score line right up to the next score line. Or I should say the first score line here. Okay, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And just like that, okay? So, we're going to take this piece and pull it to the inside. This is where I'm going to put, and glue would probably, again, work just fine here, but I am going to put tear and tape on the outside of this flap, and I'm going to do the same thing to this one. A little piece of tear and tape right up there. Okay. Grab my Take Your Pick tool. And we're going to peel that off. And now we're going to take these two. These, oh, hang on. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. I, oh, shoot. Oh, oh, dang it. I did it on the wrong side. Hang on. Let me see if I can get this off. I want the other side to be the outside. Oh, look at this. It might come right off. I didn't push it down very hard. Hang on. I got a glue eraser. I want the other side to be the outside. So that's why I'm like having a little conniption here. This is one of my glue. This is a gummy racer. It's an adhesive remover. I have this in my sticky kit. You get this and a sandy racer. Look at that, all of it's gone. Okay, now this is gonna be the outside. So I need to put my tear and tape right here. And I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna get rid of this one too. Let's see if I can peel that up. Oh, the things we have to save our butts, right? Oh, I was going along so good. <laughs> That's okay, that was an easy fix. And then we're gonna do this one because I want that to be my outside. So just keep that in mind. Sorry, you guys. I know that gets confusing when I mess up. And here we go. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring this in and you're gonna take these two pieces and you're gonna put them together in a point. The two points are together, boom, just like that. See what I did there? And then what I did, because I don't have any tear and tape down here, is I just kind of come in here with some liquid glue and stick that down. Let me show you on the other side again. Okay. Hang on, I folded these the other way, so I gotta push them down a little bit. Okay. Here comes our other side. We're gonna peel this off. And now we're gonna just hold that kind of out of the way, okay? Just keep that one with the sticky strip out of the way, or the, the tear and tape, I mean. 
Oh, there's a blast from the past. And now I'm gonna push that down. So you've got these two points together. Isn't this the sweetest thing ever? This is my little Easter basket, and I'm gonna show you what I did with it. I've got a handle here. This is uh, seven inches long. Oh, here it is. Seven inches by three quarters. So three quarters by seven inches. And again, I'm gonna use tear and tape because it is really nice and strong. And we're gonna put that on the outside also. So I got just a piece right there and a little piece right here. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it right inside our basket. So this is gonna be our handle. Let me get this off of here. Oh my gosh, it's Debbie's 51st anniversary. Congratulations. That is a fantastic celebration. Okay, you guys, look at how cute it is. Now, I did the same thing with the duck. I stamped it. I colored it with the Stampin' Blend markers, the same ones. I stamped it with Memento, colored it with these markers, put it on a pumpkin pie scallop from the layering circles. And now I'm going to find my dimensionals, which of course have disappeared because that's what happens to Kelly. And we will just grab some new ones here, <laughs> or some different ones, I should say. And we are going to add some dimensionals to our little peepers. Again, a tribute to Barb's peepers. I hope peepers is well in his new home or her new home. We don't know if it was a boy or a girl, we're not sure. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna put peepers right here, okay. And then, hang on, I've got some white shred. You can get this any place, party stores, Walmart, wherever. Some white shred to go in here. And then I have all these golden eggs. Isn't that just adorable? Look at that. Super duper. What do you guys think? And now this seriously is the easiest little basket. Now you can make these for May baskets. You can make these for little um, party favors for baby showers, Halloween. You know, you would change up the decoration and the paper or whatever. But um, these are so easy. It's literally a six by six piece scored at two inches on all four sides. Throw a handle on. You could use ribbon for your handle if you wanted to. You could staple it on there. These are just the sweetest. And I love making them. Super simple. Now I've got a whole little thing. I'm going to visit my mom this weekend. So I'm thinking I'll take this up there for her and I'll be able to deliver it, hand deliver it. Here's another, you know, this actually matches the basket. So instead of a duck on there, you could put, you know, a tulip or something. That would be a really nice little set too. So we've got a cute little basket. We've got a crisscross card, right? And we've got the bridge card. So two, three fun fold projects. And this lays flat and you can write on the back right here. Lays flat so you can mail it. Absolutely the coolest thing. This card came from Danny Garola. This card came from Sabrina Bartels. Both team members, if you guys would like to join my team, if you have any questions, let me know. We have a brand new catalog that you can order your kit contents from a pre-order list. We got to pre-order. There are three pages, two and a half pages of, oh, what's that? Oh, that's my PayPal report. <laughs> I got, I get my taxes done tomorrow morning. Please pray for me. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be pretty. Anyways, you can, you can order your kit. You get to choose $125 in product for $99. You get free shipping, but you can choose the items in your kit from the pre-order list. 
out of the new catalog. So it's pretty cool. If you want to join my team, it's a great time to do it. It's a fantastic deal. Um, you'll love being part of something bigger. We have a lot of fun. I have a team meeting Tuesday. We're going to do mystery stamping. Um, we have a card swap that we share in every month. So it's pretty cool. Mail call. Yes, taxes are not fun, but necessary. Yes, they are, Lois. Oh, hi, Mom. How are you feeling? I hope you're feeling good. Yay. You guys see my mom? Karen Flynn. She's on here. That's my mama. <laughs> Patty, you're so welcome. Okay, we do have mail. Hang tight. I got mail coming in. All right, so remember, there are free downloads for all three of these projects on my blog. They're not there yet. I have to download this video to my computer, upload it to YouTube, and then I would be able to put it on my blog and post my blog post where you'll get the free downloads for all of these projects. So you're gonna love that. And I gave you my little one inch ruler for the weirdo measurements. So those will be less confusing. Here comes mail call. Thank you very much for reminding me. <gasps> Look at how beautiful this is. This is coming to me from Julie Hillsman. Oh my goodness. Absolutely gorgeous. Is that from the stamp set that I just gave away tonight? No, but it's pretty similar, isn't it? Look at that. Um, look at how pretty this is. Julie, this is absolutely gorgeous. Julie got some happy mail. And uh, she was sending me a thank you note. And of course, she left it blank inside so that I can use the card, which is always fabulous to be able to recycle these and use them again, right? You guys know how much I love getting them. Okay, next up. Oh, this is a really pretty one, too. This is from one of my team members, Julie, team member, Suzanne Scott, team member. Look at this. Thank you for everything. I just thought this card was so striking. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you for the happy mail. She got some slimline envelopes. She won as a door prize. Beautiful, beautiful. I love all the flowers. It's a good summer, summer card time. Okay, this one is coming to me from Anne. I knew it. I recognized her address on the front. Look at how pretty this is. <gasps> She is sending me a note saying that the, the spring retreat box was awesome. She wasn't able to watch, but she's getting caught up. So, yay. Gorgeous, gorgeous card. Thank you so much, Anne. We've got the pretty envelope flap, too. And then look at this. Oh, this is for Dawson. Isn't that the sweetest? Remember this? This was a celebration set, the little sheep. But super, super, super cute. And I love the message she put in here. Thank you, Anne, so much. You are always so, so thoughtful. Then we have Rhea Jones. Look at this beautiful card. Oh, look at all that gold. This is the thank you card. She received her happy mail from the team meeting. Yay, I'm so happy. Yeah, this is really pretty, Rhea. Thank you so much. Oh, did we? Yeah, we got some decoration on the inside in here too. Beautiful. I love that black with the gold. It's so striking. <gasps> Rainbows. This is so cool. This is from Linda Keister. Look at how pretty. She put Wink of Stella on all these strips. And she did some flicking with her marker. And look, just the sentiment. And then all the rest of it is just pretty creativity, right? Isn't that gorgeous? Thank you for the happy mail. You are so welcome. Um, oh, and Linda, thank you so much. Her name is Linda Kester. She's telling me it's pronounced like Lester, but with a K. I always say Keister. So thank you very much for telling me that. I appreciate it. But isn't this beautiful, you guys? Like so simple, but so striking. I would have never thought of that. This is why we have card sharing. <laughs> this is from my friend Elaine Rebeck. Elaine sends me this beautiful, beautiful Easter card. Oh, look at that. Thanks for being a terrific demonstrator. Elaine, you are so sweet. That is beautiful. I love the shine on this polka dot paper too. 
gorgeous. All right, here we go. We have another one coming from Barbara Pike. Oh, you guys are going to love this. Look at this. Thank you, Kelly. How cool is that? Ah, for a very fun weekend, Barbara is sending a thank you for the spring retreat also. Look at how cool that is, you guys. She put these letters on the foam, self-adhesive foam to make them be very 3D. Barbara, thank you so much. This is just absolutely gorgeous. I love this. We're going to we're going to have to make one of these, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> this is where the good ideas come from. Here comes our next one. This one is from Joanne Prosser and I oops, let me get this. I looked at this. I thought, "How cool is that using that um lattice down the side like that?" Very, very cool. And I love the plant on the tag. Look at this. And she's also sending a thank you card for the spring virtual retreat. She said she really enjoyed my live video and the make and take videos. She can't wait for the next one. Which reminds me, you guys, we have a catalog kickoff coming. Hang on. Um, that just sparked a memory in my head. Let me grab my calendar here. And take a look at, it's not in April. Oh, we're going to be doing a catalog kickoff May 3rd through the 20th. Registration is going to be coming out. Um, if you are a Stamp Happy Academy member, basic, premium, or live, you will get this catalog kickoff event for free. Okay? So when you see the registration come out, you do not pay money. Otherwise, it's $15 if you are not part of the Stamp Happy Academy. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knows, do not pay money if you are on my team or part of the Stamp Happy Academy. You get the catalog kickoff event for free. Okay, a little bit more mail, you guys, and then we're gonna call it a night. Look at how pretty this is. This is from Angela. Okay, and Angela, I don't know how to say your last name, but I'm going to go Mac Moctimus. How's that? <laughs> Look at how pretty this is. Oh, yes, she got her mailing profile correct. You betcha. I'm always happy to help with stuff like that, Angela. I'm so glad that you asked, but look at how pretty that is. Ah, love the peaches. Love them. Next up. Ooh, here's another beautiful card. This is from Gwen Ball. Very pretty Gwen. She got some happy mail too. Ah, oh, this is, I loved that paper. Didn't you love that paper? As much as I love this paper, I love how this is stacked on here with the various patterns. Very, very pretty. Next up. Ooh, here's another pretty one. This is the um, hand pen cards and envelopes. Look at the cards and envelopes. The, the envelopes are decorated like this, and then the cards are too. This is from Jan Fortin. She's on my team, and she is thanking me for the embellishments she got in her door prizes. Yay, from our team meeting. Here comes another one. This is from Paula Marisak. Ooh, look at how pretty this is. That's a fun card, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, yeah. I like it. I've never made one like this before. Uh, she got happy mail too. Yay, you are so welcome, Paula. Thank you. Then we have Barbara. Barbara Savoring. Oh, I just posted her card on my on my Facebook pages. Barbara, this was absolutely gorgeous. There we go. Wanted to thank you for being such a great team leader. Thank you so much. She got her happy mail too. Your card is beautiful, Barbara. Isn't it beautiful? I think Barbara's on here tonight. Oh, so pretty. Then we have Luba. Luba sent me this fabulous Easter card. Look how cute it is. This is using the waterfall fun fold. Super, super cool. And look, she's got a little pull down here. What a great idea. She is just wishing me a happy Easter. Luba, you're so sweet. Look at how... She's got Wink of Stella on this bunny. That is so cute. All right, one more. One more, and then we're all done with mail. Oh, this is so cute. Gloria Shermo. 
A quick note to say thanks. She got some happy mail too. Gloria, you are so welcome. I love this. Very pretty color combination. That little mouse is adorable. Okay, you guys, I think that we are done. I am going to get this video downloaded for you so you can get your um, downloads off my blog. I hope you enjoyed the class tonight. Please don't hesitate if you have any questions. I love my job and I love helping people. <clears throat> this is my blog. I always appreciate your orders. This is my current host code. And um, you'll find everything on my blog shortly. If you're watching later on YouTube, when you click below the video, there's some information in there. You're going to find a direct link to my blog, which will show you all of these projects so you can get those downloads also. There's also a complete shopping list that tells you all of the ingredients, the colors of ink and cardstock and what the names of all the products are. When you click on any of those, it'll take you right to my Stampin' Up! store where you can place an order if you need something. So... Always appreciate your orders, you guys. I will not be live next Sunday. It is Easter. So I want to wish you a happy Easter in advance. And um, whatever you're doing, I hope you're with friends, with family. You're enjoying good food, good company, a good movie, whatever it is that you do on Easter Sunday. Wishing you all the best. Enjoy the holiday. Have a great couple weeks. Bye-bye.